If you heat copper to sulfate pentahydrate and get rid of all of the water, we want to know how much anhydrous copper to sulfate is left if you started with 500 grams of the hydrated compound. And here's what I want you to see. The CuSO4.5H2O is getting heated and it's giving you the CuSO4, obviously, along with five extra H2O molecules. Now those are driven off as steam. This is a solid and this hydrated compound is also a solid. But the point is that we're gonna start with 500 grams of this and it's gonna decompose to give us some new stuff. But how much new stuff? Well, it's either gonna become this or this. Wouldn't it be nice to know how much of the total mass of this was contributed by the copper sulfate versus the water? Well, calculating the molar mass of that compound will help you see it. The molar mass of the compound is the sum of the molar masses of all the things that make it up. Copper here contributes 63.55. The sulfur contributes 32.07. The O4 is four oxygens. Each of the oxygens is 16. And then separately, we also have five waters. I'm gonna do that in a different color. Each water weighs 18.02. Now, if you don't believe me, you can add up two hydrogens and an oxygen, H2O. You'll always get 18.02. At some point, you'll just have memorized that and you'll get the total molar mass of the whole compound. 63.55 plus 32.07 plus four sixteens plus five 18.02s. The whole compound here has a molar mass of 249.72 grams per mole. Now, the question I have for you is, how much of that was contributed by the anhydrous compound, the CuSO4, versus the water? Lots of teachers will ask you for the percent by mass of water in the compound, and to get that, you take the contribution of water divided by the molar mass of the whole compound. Here, because we're asked for the mass of anhydrous copper that's lost, maybe we want just the percent that is actually CuSO4. The contribution of CuSO4 was 63.55 plus 32.07 plus 4 sixteens. It was 159.62 out of the entire 249.72. If you divide that contribution of anhydrous copper sulfate by the mass of the whole compound, you learn that it was 64.70% oh, anhydrous. What that means is that you want 64.7% of 500 grams to get the mass of dry stuff that was left. 64.7% of the whole compound was copper sulfate. So when the water leaves, 64.7% of your starting mass is what's left over. Take it, times it by 500, I end up with 323.48 grams. Now I gotta watch out for my significant figures here. Um, here, when you're adding numbers together, you actually take decimal places. So I do want two decimal places in my final answer. That's five sig figs. But this number was only four sig figs. Therefore, I want my answer to be four significant figures. So the official answer here is 323.5 grams. It's just the way significant figures works. Feel free to watch another video. It doesn't have to be by me if you don't know what significant figures are. There you go. The idea is that the copper sulfate pentahydrate is breaking up to give you dry stuff and water. The percent that was the dry stuff is the contribution of the dry stuff out of the total. 
in our case, 159.62 out of 249.72. And that fraction is the percent of the starting mass that is left after the water leaves. Loved it. Hope you did too. Best of luck.